Ferrari's US Grand Prix was a dream come true for the team and the Tifosi. It wasn't just the fact that they secured a 1-2 finish, it was the manner in which they pulled it off that was so impressive. From lap 1 they looked racy, and once Ferrari made the call to get signs to undercut Verstappen, the two drivers never looked like being challenged. Winning with such comfort, so completely unchallenged, is something the team are unaccustomed to. What made it even more impressive was their lack of upgrades while their rivals arrived laden with new parts. So how did Ferrari manage it? And are they safe to dream of a championship title? Today, I'll check it all out, so don't go anywhere. For a Ferrari fan, getting your hopes up is a surefire way to ruin your weekend. Almost two decades since their last F1 title, false dawns have been followed by failed seasons, have been followed by bitter disappointments. We often call the team at the bottom of the Constructors' Championship the also-rans, but Ferrari have established themselves as the also-rans of the front of the field. They're always there or thereabouts, but never serious contenders come the end of the season. Not since Sebastian Vettel drove for them in the late 2010s has anyone seriously considered them as potential title challengers. Fred Vasseur is changing that narrative, though. Dismantling Ferrari's overly complex and political factory structure was always going to take time. Having to justify your decisions to a horde of Italian millionaires who expect nothing less than world championship glory can't be easy for a little jolly Frenchman, but he appears to be navigating that challenge with incredible skill. But time is needed to create success. Before this season started, it would have been safe to say that championship success for Ferrari probably wasn't expected until 2026, but shockingly, this season, despite their failed upgrades, hope is growing that this could be the one to end all those years of pain. The clown wall has taken off its makeup, the driver errors appear to have diminished, and their car in Austin last weekend appeared unbeatable. But how did they do it without any upgrades, while their rivals, Red Bull and McLaren, had a huge number of new parts? Well, those handy forms that the FIA publish before each race, which summarize the parts changed on each car before the weekend, only list parts that have had changes to the aerodynamic surfaces. So anything internal isn't listed on that form. Surprisingly, though, despite nothing being listed on that form for Ferrari, it was the front wing which changed in Austin, though the shape of it remained identical. Initially, this upgraded front wing design was supposed to debut in Austin, but was fast-tracked to the Singapore Grand Prix instead. However, that was only a basic version of the wing, which further evolved in Texas. The new front wing fitted to the SF24 in Austin had a new core material composition, which increased its flexibility under load. That's right, the front wing was upgraded to be more flexible. But don't worry, this isn't going to be about everyone's least favorite subject. I'm not here to talk about flexi wings today. While Ferrari had this aerodynamic profile of wing in Singapore, the team weren't expecting to see the benefits of it until the US Grand Prix. With Singapore being such an outlier of a track in terms of its characteristics, the team weren't particularly worried about their 5th and 7th place finish. They knew that wasn't their true performance. But bringing that new spec of front wing to Singapore did offer the team a huge advantage, even if it didn't show in their results. It allowed them to use it during a Pirelli tyre test that the team participated in at Mugello before the Austin Grand Prix. At a more traditional circuit, Ferrari had a chance to properly examine the real-world performance of the wing, and according to insiders at Maranello, they were very impressed by what they saw. The new, more flexible front wing has made a significant contribution to the car's performance, and was immediately praised by signs, while Leclerc took longer to adapt to the new balance in the fast sections, but the changes in setup between the sprint race and the Grand Prix last weekend allowed him to dominate, even compared to his teammate. This is how the SF24, at least in Austin, made an important step forward in the high-speed corners without compromising its weaknesses in the slower sections. This new front wing, in combination with the floor changes made in Monza, have made the Scuderia the fastest team out there at the moment. As Vasseur said, the upgrade, it's not a game changer, but every millisecond can make a difference, so we have to develop in this direction. Before I talk about whether that performance could be rewarded with a championship title though, something the team are daring to dream of. If you're enjoying the video and want to catch more daily F1 news, then make sure to give us a like and subscribe, it's really appreciated. Thanks a lot. With this upgraded SF24, the Tafosi are daring to dream. 
With a number of traditional F1 tracks coming, Ferrari's performance in Austin has given them a reason to be hopeful. Up until last weekend, all the talk was of Lando Norris and McLaren challenging Red Bull and Max Verstappen in both titles, but with Verstappen extending his lead over Norris, any hope the Lando fans may have had is all but gone. While McLaren have rightly received plaudits for their performances, which have gained them the lead in the lucrative Constructors' Championship, Ferrari are now only 48 points behind them, a very surmountable gap. In the Drivers' Championship, Leclerc is 18 points behind Norris, who is then 57 points behind Verstappen. Closing a 75-point gap in five races is impossible, however, that isn't stopping Charles Leclerc from dreaming. With a maximum of 146 points still available, Leclerc admits he isn't ruling out a consistently strong end to the season, giving him a chance, but that he will need a lot of luck to be brought truly into the fight. I mean, I never say never, Leclerc said. Let's say that for the constructors, if we do everything perfect until the end of the season, no matter what McLaren does, if we do better than them, I think we can still catch that title. With the drivers, I see it in a bit of a different way. Even if we do everything perfect, I feel like it will require a little bit of luck inside that to try and get that title, and we cannot really rely on luck. So the drivers seems to be quite unlikely, but again, I'll believe in it until it's mathematically impossible. Mathematically, it may still be possible, but outscoring Verstappen by 15 points per weekend for the rest of the season, well, that is impossible. It would require Verstappen to finish 7th or 8th in every race, and for Leclerc to win the remaining 5 Grand Prix, and neither of those things are going to happen. No driver has won back-to-back -back races since Verstappen did in June, and he's still the only driver to do it all season. And even as the only driver to win back-to-back -back races, he hasn't won more than two in a row. Like Leclerc says, any chance would require some luck. If Verstappen were to have an engine fail on him causing a DNF, and then take an engine penalty in the following race and start from the back of the grid, then maybe it would be possible. But that kind of thing just doesn't happen in F1 anymore. Unless you're Alpine, of course. If Leclerc hadn't celebrated that Monaco victory so hard that he had a hangover that spanned the next four Grand Prix, then maybe he could rely on his own performances for a win, but three races in four with no points ended any title hope he had. However, Ferrari are now just 48 points adrift of McLaren in the fight for the Constructors' Championship and eight behind Red Bull in second place. After a run of four strong performances on different tracks, Leclerc says success from the team's point of view has to be the main target for the remaining five races of the season. We've got to target winning the Constructors' title. It's an optimistic goal, but that's what we're here for. We'll do the math at the end of the season, he said. Until then, I think the best thing we can do is to focus on ourselves, on our own performance, just like we did this weekend. Leclerc's team principal, Frederic Vasseur, is backing himself to get Ferrari their first silverware since 2008 this year as well. Speaking during an appearance on the F1 Nation podcast, Fred was asked how he viewed the Constructors' Championship fight entering into the final Grand Prix of the season, with Austin having kick-started a triple header of races, also featuring Mexico and Brazil. We're not thinking about the championship, and I want to keep the team in this mood because I think it's important to be focused on pure performance session after session, and not to have somewhere in your mind the championship," he explained. If something can arrive at the end, it'll be more by the performance day per day than by the approach of the overall championship. We know perfectly that next week will be a completely different challenge. We'll start from scratch, and you can have a completely different result in Mexico in one week time. In terms of the current mood in the Ferrari camp, Vasseur spoke positively about the attitude of the team as they look to keep on improving race by race. What I want is to have people taking more risk and have the power to take risk. I think we are in this mood and approach. For sure, we have to improve. We've done some things to improve, and this is important to keep this mindset. Even when you get a good result, it's not the end of the story, and to come back on Monday with a long list of things to improve when you're winning, it's a good mentality. Ferrari is a sleeping giant that has hibernated for almost two decades. Like Smaug, they've slumbered upon the hard-earned piles of gold for far too long. But now, a hobbit by the name of Fred Vasseur has come along to awaken them and unleash the beast. Do you think that Ferrari could pull off a championship victory this year? Or is this performance coming to them too late? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you want to support the channel, make sure to check out our merch store at f1reverse.com. Until next time, drive safe and bye for now.